Here we go. Since 1929, advertising has asserted that Guinness is good for you. And while that claim might reasonably be disputed by the medical profession these days, what is undeniably true is that the humble black stuff was the impetus behind one of the most important discoveries in all of science and medicine. William Seeley Gossett isn't precisely a household name, but his contribution to science and alcohol is difficult to overstate. Gossett joined Guinness in 1899 as an apprentice brewer. At the time, Guinness had a policy of recruiting the best and the brightest minds to get the edge over their competition. And at just 23 years of age, Gossett was a shining exemplar of precisely that. At the time, Guinness had a problem with sourcing their malt and hops. They needed vast quantities of both, and they had to be of the highest quality. A single bad decision could have put them out of business. The problem was that they often only had small samples from which to make these huge decisions. How do you compare two groups when you only have limited data in both? This isn't a trivial question. The smaller your sample sizes are, the more likely it is that a single outlier can skew the entire analysis. Gossett's genius was in realizing a simple way that you could compare two groups and work out whether differences between them were due to random fluctuations or indicative of some real difference. By 1908, Gossett was ready to publish. The only problem was that Guinness had a strict policy that their workers could not publish and mention Guinness, beer in general, or even their surnames. And so Gossett published his findings under a pen name of his choosing, Student. The advent of what has become known as student's tea test mightn't seem like a big deal, and indeed Gossett himself was modest about it. But it has proven critical in fields where large samples are not ethically or reasonably achievable, medicine chief among them. Imagine you're trying to test the efficacy of a new drug. You split your subjects into two groups. To one, you give the new drug, and you call that the active arm. To the other, you give a placebo, or non-active agent, and you call that the control arm. What you're really interested in asking is whether there's a real difference between the two arms, the active and the control. But people vary hugely. By chance alone, you'd expect massive variations inside those groups a spectrum of responses. How do you know if the differences you observe between two groups are indicative of something real or not? Because new medicines can have bad side effects, it would be unethical to simply give drugs to lots of different patients, even though this would make the effects more obvious. With students' t-test, you can give drugs to smaller amounts of patients to see if the benefits are likely beneficial before rolling it out to bigger groups. Students' t-test has accordingly become one of, if not the most, important tests in all of biomedical science, because it allows us to ascertain whether an effect exists whilst minimizing harm. Whenever you read a headline about a new COVID treatment, or vaccine, or breakthrough cancer therapy, it is a virtual certainty that students' t-test has been used somewhere in the process. Incidentally, the reason that Gossett chose student as a nickname is lost in the midst of time. But there was a tradition among Guinness workers of the time to have nicknames to differentiate themselves. One can easily imagine Gossett walking to work among all the Coopers and other workers with his ponderous face, books under his arm, and them looking up to him going, how are you, student? Was the crack with yourself? Whatever the reason, Gossett himself rose to become chief brewer of Guinness. Over a hundred years later, his insights have not only improved our pints of porter, but have also saved countless lives in the process. So the next time you're waiting for your pint to settle, consider raising a glass to William Seeley, student, Gossett. And considering that, at least once, Guinness was actually good for us. Slaunch it.
and chance of another round. Is he still banging on about statistics? I think you've had enough. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs>